Hi students. Today we're going to take a look at um, activity 6.1 in our textbook. This is modifying our test scores program to use a list instead of um, calculating the total and then dividing it by the count. So first I've kind of used, I've taken the same program but I've turned it into an age calculation program just so I'm not completely working with the same code, but it's very similar. Um, so let's take a look at how this works. Um, I'm going to run through the program first. And I've got this program that's set up to enter a bunch of ages. I'm going to go ahead and put some ages in here. Click X to exit. And we've got a, a counter that the age ages all total to 100. There are four ages, ages, so the average age is 25. Okay, so again, these are all um, being stored in our counter and an age total. So what we're going to do is the very first thing we want to do is to turn this into storing through a list instead. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're not going to use these variables age total or counter anymore. We're going to totally get rid of those. And instead, we're going to create a new list called ages. And this code, ages equals two square brackets, will initialize an empty list. Okay, we're going to do the same exact thing here. We're going to in input an age. Uh, we're still going to run these tests. Age equals x. Um, instead of returning the age total and the counter, because we've got rid of them, we're going to return our list, which is ages. Okay. In the next part, we've got age is int age. That's still going to be the same if age is greater than or equal to zero and age is less than or equal to 100. I mean, I guess we could technically have our ages be higher than 100. Uh, there's nothing that says someone can't go past 100. Um, again, we're going to get rid of our age total and our counter. And so what are we going to want to do in this case? As, as long as our ages are within this range, let's just up this to 120. Okay. Age must be from 0 to 120. All right. So hopefully someone can live a really long life there at 120. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to need to add that value to our list. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the append method. So we're going to we're going to call the list and append and then we're going to pass it what we want to have um, so put into our list. So here we've got ages, the name of the list. We're going to use the append method and we're going to pass it our value of age. Okay. Else print age must be from zero to 120 age discarded. Please try again. That is the first step. Okay. So, um, that was the very first step modify get ages. So ages are stored to a list. I'm going to say check. We have done that. All right. Now the next step is modify process ages. So the ages list is its only argument use a for statement to get the totals. So let's take a look at process ages. So down here, process ages, again, we have no more age total or count. We're going to get rid of the average. We don't need any of that. Um, and we are basically going to just get rid of all of these things right now. And instead of a process ages, we're going to pass it our list ages. And let's go ahead and make a for loop. So our for loop is going to loop through every single item in our list. So let's do our total ages equals zero. We'll initialize that variable. And then we're going to create our for loop. So for um, we can't use age again in this, so I'm going to say for this age in ages, 
Okay, so again, what this is going to do is it's going to loop through the ages and every single value is going to store to a variable called this age. And what we're going to do is type in total ages plus equal this age. Okay, so again, this is going to loop through and we'll see um, our variable total ages being incremented for every single value in our ages list. So I'm going to then take my age total and output total ages here. And let's see if we can get this all to work here, but I can't really run my program yet because I'm still kind of in the middle of changing everything around. Okay, so let's take a look what we've got here. Um, modify process ages. So the ages list is its only argument. Use a for statement to get the totals. Okay, so we've done that. Check. All right, the next item. Modify the main function so the list is stored in a variable. So let's go ahead and take a look at the main function. That one is always going to be down at the bottom. So we're calling our display welcome. That's fine. Um, we don't want to use our age total and count. So instead here, we're going to have ages equal to get ages. And process ages is also going to have the ages list sent to it. Okay, so that looks good. All right, I think we should be able to run this now. So modify the main function so the list is stored in a variable. Check. Okay. Modify the call to process ages so it passes the age list. Yes. Check. And the next item says get the total input count and the average age, the lowest age, the highest age, and median age. So let's take a look at what we've got outputting so far. So we've got our total age. Now our number of ages. This is where you're going to have to try and figure out which one of those um, methods do we want to have being used to find the, the number of items in our list. So in this case, we can use length, which is going to be L-E-N, and ages is our list, so the length of ages. And our average score is going to find out how we're going to calculate that average score. So uh, we're going to need to do a little bit more calculations up here above. So the length of ages we can just output right there. Our average we can, let's do average age equals to total ages divided by the length of ages. Let me put that. Let's go ahead and round that one. Get a good output for that. Oops, round. All right, so round total ages divided by length of ages. So again, if our total ages was 100, like it was here, and we've got four items stored in our list, we will get 25. So here in average age, I'm going to put my variable average age, All right? All right, so we've got the average, um, and then we need to have our lowest age. And do you remember what it is that you're going to use to find the lowest of something? That is just going to be the function, the method minimum. So I'm going to just go ahead and put min ages. And then we can do the same thing for highest age. Oh, I totally can't type. And that one is going to be max ages. So the only thing that we have left to do is the median. Um, let's go ahead and run this first and make sure that we have everything working 
and then we'll take a look at median. All right, so here I'm going to enter my ages again. Um, I'm just going to add some things up. And X. All right, so age total is 105. The number of ages is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sounds good. The average age is 21. The lowest age is 2. The highest age is 48. So we're looking pretty good right there. Okay, so the next item that we need to do is the median. Now, there isn't a nice, simple way to do median with without importing something. Um, so the book tells us that to find the median, and that's the one that's going to be in the middle range of all these numbers, what we want to do is we want to get the length and divide it by 2, but we want to take the lesser one if it happens to be an if there happens to be an even number of items, okay? Um, on page 191 in our book, it shows us how we can do that. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, they recommend doing something like median index, because we're trying to find the one in the middle, and use the length of our list. And then we're going to do division, but we're going to do floor division, which is two um, division marks. And what that's going to do is it will take, it will round down if there's a remainder. Okay, so um, divide that by two. And then we're going to find the index for that particular one. So um, ages. and the median index. So we'll see what that looks like. So again, if let's say I have five um, items in here, when we do five divided by two, that's going to give us two, well, 2.5, that will give us two. Well, let's see how that works. Let me go ahead and add this print median age comma median and let's see what happens. All right, let's test this out. So um, let's just do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Uh, age total is 150. Number of ages 5, average age is 30, low age is 10, highest age is 50, median age is 30. Okay, that works out well. That is the one in the middle. Let's try it with an even number. So I'll just do 10, 20, 30, 40, and we get a median age of 30, which isn't quite exact. Um, when I look at it, it tells us if if it is an even number that we should then uh, add the two of these together and create a uh, find what's in between those, which seems like an awful lot of work to me. So I'm going to show you the other way to do this, um, which is we can import one of our built in modules and it is called statistics. So we'll go ahead and use statistics which will allow us to use the median function that they have created in statistics, which is going to make this a lot easier for us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this, this thing. And the median now, I remember we're, um, we're using that statistics, so we have to say statistics dot median and then pass our list to it. Okay, so this is a lot easier. We don't have to do any crazy calculations and division for this. Let's keep things as easy as possible, I say. All right, so let's see if this works. And it, again, the way we had originally done it with my 10, 20, 30, 40, it was giving us a median age of 30. Let's see if that works. 10, 20, 30, 40, X. So see? It did that calculation for us, which is basically finding what is in between the two items that are in the middle. So 
I like that a lot better than having to write five lines of code. And this is one of the reasons why being able to import all these other modules really makes our life easy as Python programmers. All right, let me try it one more time with my other items, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And there is that median age of 30, which is exactly what we want. So hope that was helpful. Now take this information and go ahead and apply it to your version of the test scores program and have fun playing around with all these list methods. Thanks a lot. Bye.